We are on our third curriculum, math curriculum, this year already for my son. And I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about how. I'm going to talk about why. I'm going to talk about the curriculum, all the curriculum that we have been going through, and all the mistakes that I've made and what I'm doing about it, so you don't have to make these mistakes. So my name is Leilani. I actually being a former public and private school teacher, and specifically in mathematics for middle school, which he was in middle school last year, you would think that I would know what I'm doing with math. And and maybe there was a little bit of that pride and thinking, you know, I got this, and also maybe forgetting that I needed to do that with my son. Uh, but the real reason I believe that math kind of had some issues this year <laughs> is because last year I really, really focused in on the writing and rhetoric side of things. I felt that it was so incredibly important for my son to learn how to communicate with people through the written word, through the spoken word. I mean, I had him taking classes at the co-op and then doing IEW and then doing writing and rhetoric, a whole nother curriculum. And I think it really did pay off. But math, it did definitely fall by the wayside. And I really think math is important, especially from one who really, I love math. A lot of our kids are gonna make that statement why do I need to learn this we hear it over and over again we hear it in the public school we hear we heard we probably said it we probably said that why do I need to do math and it's not necessarily the math itself I mean we're not gonna use advanced trigonometry it's the process of getting your brain to think logically that's what it is it's training your brain to think and solve problems so this year as we sat down to decide what kind of curriculum we were gonna use I looked at his algebra one last year and made a decision that I felt like he just needed to do it again I'm not really Really gonna go into too much about what he did but what I did as a parent I did not really follow through with checking up on those things so when we sat down and we decided what curriculum we would use I asked him if he liked math he said he absolutely loved math he thought he had it down and so we went shopping he actually went to the homeschool FPEA convention with me which is actually the largest homeschool convention in the world in Florida seriously like just fly out and come because we literally have everything everything it's everything's there anyway so we went shopping we looked at different types of curriculum with his thoughts he made a decision we chose this curriculum called the art of problem solving introduction to algebra which this one is actually considered to be algebra one the guy who sold it to us and me going through it thinking okay he's advanced this is second year algebra he's going to be pretty good at this so we're going to do well with this that was what i was thinking i didn't do any assessments with him so that's a that is a big mistake the second mistake number one no assessments which you can find online for free you can even find them on certain curriculum websites okay it doesn't have to be standardized test honestly. In fact, standardized tests, I wouldn't even do standardized tests for that kind of assessment. He decided this was the best one for him because this was his reasoning. One, it was self-taught. He wanted to do it on his own. Two, it was not on the computer. He did not want a curriculum that was on the computer. He just wanted to get away from that. And three, it was considered to be one of the hardest math curriculums out there. So I was game. I, I got it. He was super excited. He actually wanted to start this early Anyway, you can kind of look to see what kind of algebra topics they have. Of course, the quadratic equation is chapter 10. The big one that everybody freaks out about now, now, right? Okay, quadratic equations. That seems to be the one that people get stuck on. That used to be at the end of algebra one, but not anymore. <laughs> They've moved it up. What is now algebra one? It's kind of like algebra two. And what is now pre-algebra? kind of like algebra one when we were kids it's getting harder you know a lot of us are like we're not in the public school system we get it however if our child is going to be like a, an electrical engineer or if they really love math or if they're going to go into physics or anything like that they want them to understand mathematics now that's a whole nother bunny trail i can go down when it comes to careers and college and i know you don't even have to go to college to be an engineer anymore if you talk to any of the older engineers they're complaining about how uneducated some of these engineers are, the ones that are coming into the field. There's just so much we can go, there's so many thoughts on that. Leave them in the comments down below. The point is, is that if your child is going into one of those fields, it's getting com competitive. So we got this book, he sat down, and we worked through the first two chapters. I was having a blast, but 
it was like a foreign language to him. He did not get it. Now, the one thing with this curriculum that is different is that there's no test. So the only way that I could evaluate him was to see if he could solve these problems on his own. And actually, they went pretty quickly. And I think he only get, got five five problem practice problems to do, which to me, when it comes to math, that's a big problem because in order to learn some of these rules and these steps, you need to do several math problems. Memorize the steps and the process and what goes here and this goes here, you have to practice. And five problems is not enough, but it is if that child is really good at mathematics and they have a quick memory, this is perfect for them. But if your child is not in that category, this is not gonna work. He was stressing out, he, he didn't know what to do next with the problem because he had never, he had never really learned that. This is not working. My mistake was that I did not do an assessment on him. But I decided we're going to try, we're gonna try Matthew C. And there is actually two different Algebra One curriculums for Matthew C. There's the Legacy curriculum, and then there is the Principles of Secondary Mathematics. When I was doing my research to see which one I wanted to go with, the Legacy curriculum is going to be more of that and Matthew C style that you hear about with the manipulatives and the mastery and all of that. Now, from what I understand, this one is still gonna be a mastery approach, but this one is going to be a little bit more advanced. The third mistake I made, you know, he thought he was really, really good at math, which I love that. I love that he thought he was great at math, but I didn't do the assessment, so I just trusted him and went with it. Okay, so I'm editing right now, and I forgot to say something that I thought was extremely important. I wanted to throw it in really quick, but I didn't have time to set up my equipment. Anyway, the point is, is that because I didn't get a chance to assess him, I decided to put him where I thought he belonged based on the little information that I know, which was age and what he had told me. And because of that, it really messed with him. Unfortunately, really messed with him. So now I am battling this problem with him feeling like he's stupid, which he isn't, and that he's behind, which in reality he, he isn't behind, and it's really, really struggling for me to find him joy in math, which we're working on that, and he is really smart. He's really good at it. It's just, honestly, we didn't focus on it last year. <laughs> so the next thing we got, like I said, was Matthew C. And the reason I got this one is because I've heard so many good stories about how it works well with kids that have autism. My son does not have autism, but you know, let's try it. If it works, maybe it works well for him. I don't know, let's try it. Plus I heard Mr. Demi speak and I thought he was amazing. Well, here's what I have to say about Matthew C. It is actually very good. And I have been very happy with it. And I do like the videos and I do like the thoroughness of it. But for my son, he needed more. The one thing that this curriculum did provide, there was an extra, I don't even know what it is because I didn't do it with him. I don't know if it was an assessment. I don't know if it was just a review. I don't know if it was videos. I don't know if it was works. I don't know what it was because I was like, ah, eh, we're in Algebra 1. Let's go with it. You know, let's just jump into Algebra 1 without seeing if he, you know, knew this stuff or if he needed a review, which I probably should go back and do it now that I'm thinking about it but he is already on chapter three in this book. I know I said three curriculums, let me explain. But the way that it kind of works, and I'll give you a, a quick rundown. Oh, this is really a nice picture right here of how this works. So you have a unit, and then you have lesson one, part A and part B, and within those part A and part B, there's a bunch of activities. You watch the video, you take notes with the video, you work the problems with the videos, and then you have individual problems. Then you have some targeted reviews that you go through, practices, and then you have the lesson test. Pretty straightforward, right? He needed more practice. And we needed to slow down a little bit. Actually, it was chapter two that they went into linear equation. And even though he watched the video and did the problems with them, he was still not used to solving. One step, he was even having problems doing one step, and he needed to go back and memorize those rules. And it's nothing to do with his ability, it's the fact that we didn't really spend time learning it. So we did, we did the one step, we did the two step, we did the three step, and his mind, he started learning the process, but in order to get those extra math worksheets, my sister-in-law introduced me to an amazing 
resource. It's online. It's free. It's called Flipped Math. I'm going to leave a link down in the description box below, but we... Now, I will say this. I do believe that if you have a child that really does struggle with math, they're probably not going to go into a mathematical field. I, I, I really believe you could do this on its own as a curriculum. And of course, as a homeschool parent, you can do whatever you want, <laughs> right? It, it has videos and then it has practice problems. It breaks it down really well. So we did that. We went through each equation, came back to the book, and then he did the practice test and he got it. He did really well. If we're going to go through part A and I'm going to see how he does with the practice, if he needs more work, I'm going to go over to flipped math find whatever topic it is to see if I can break it down some more. And right now, even though we're on our third curriculum, I am kind of flip-flopping between the two. Because flipped math is not a very high level algebra one, I want him to have that higher level math because, you know, one of the career fields that he may go into, engineering, may require more math. So I want him to have that. That's kind of where we are. <laughs> Number one mistake. Please assess your child, please know their learning style, and please just be patient with them because math is not easy. And if your child ever says to you, I'm never going to use this, remind them it's not about the actual stuff that you're using, it's about the logical thinking and the process and the training your brain and building your brain and remapping your brain and all those things. That's why I'm going to relearn calculus when I'm old, so I will have a brain. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I feel like this is a very long video, um, but I hope you learned something. And leave me those comments down below and, and share ideas with others. So thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video.